Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace a drive in a SoftRaid array. Before we start, we've already installed SoftRaid on our computer. We'll be using SoftRaid 7 on Ventura in this example, but the basic instruction should also apply to other versions and OSs. It's recommended that you replace the failed drive in your RAID array with one that's the same size or larger. While RAID volumes offer a level of data redundancy, there's always a small chance that there may be some damage to the volume's data during the rebuilding process. Because of this, we recommend backing up your data to a separate drive using your preferred method before performing this procedure. Now, let's get started. Once we've backed up our data to a separate drive, we can begin the repair process. There are two reasons to replace the drive. It's either predicted to fail, or it has already failed. The process is slightly different for each one. If there's an issue with a drive, SoftRaid will put up a warning dialog box stating the issue when the RAID device is attached to your computer. If that dialog is dismissed, you can still see that there's an issue as the SoftRaid icon in the menu bar will be yellow instead of blue. To find out what the nature of the problem is, open up SoftRaid. The warning dialog will likely pop up again. Go ahead and dismiss it. If a disk is predicted to fail, there will be a warning in the disks column on the left hand side in the panel for the drive. If the disk is not being recognized at all, there will be a warning in the volumes column on the right hand side that a disk is missing. Now that we know what the trouble is, we can go through the steps necessary to resolve it. If a drive is predicted to fail but is still readable, there are a number of steps to take to ensure your data's integrity. The first thing we need to do is determine where the failing drive in the array is located. Click on the drive listed as failing in the left column, then go to the disk menu and select Blink Disk Light. The drive's indicator light should blink, indicating which one needs replacement. In our case, it's drive C. Mark the location of the drive down so we remember which one needs replacing later. Then, go back up to the disk menu and select Blink Disk Light again to turn off the light. Now that we know which disk needs replacing, we recommend validating the data on the RAID volume. This will check all of the blocks of data across all of the drives in the RAID to make sure it's all intact. Select the RAID volume with the failing disk in the right-hand column. Then, go to the volume menu and select Validate. You'll get a dialog box describing the validation process. Go ahead and choose Validate. You'll be asked for your username and password. Enter those and validation will continue. This may take a while. Once validation has been completed, we can then safely remove the failing drive from the array. With the RAID volume still selected on the right, go to the Volume menu and select Remove Disk. You'll get a dialog box listing all the drives in the array. Go down the list until you find the drive marked as failing. With that drive selected, click the Remove button. You'll get a confirmation dialog asking if you really want to remove the drive from your RAID. Go ahead and click Remove. You'll then need to enter your username and password. SoftRaid will remove the drive from the array, and after a few moments, you'll see the volume on the right is listed as degraded. This is okay, as we'll be fixing this in the final step. Then, unmount the volume and shut down your RAID device. You can then physically remove the failing drive and replace it according to your enclosure's instructions. If a disk is not being recognized at all, we can use the soft RAID application to help determine the drive that has malfunctioned. On the right-hand side of the soft RAID window, select the volume that's degraded. You'll see green lines connecting the volumes to the drive seen. Command or shift-click each of these drives to select them all. Then, go to the disk menu and select Blink Disk Light. On your RAID device, all the recognized drives should have their indicators flashing. By process of elimination, the one that isn't flashing is the drive that needs replacing. In this case, it's drive C. Mark down which drive needs replacing, then go back to the disk menu and select Blink Disk Light again to turn the option off. 
Go back to the right hand side and make sure the RAID volume is selected. Then go to the volume menu and select Remove Missing Disk. You'll get a confirmation dialog asking if you really want to remove the missing disks from your RAID. Go ahead and click Remove. You'll then need to enter your username and password. Once you've done that, the drive will be removed from the list of disks in the array. Then, unmount the volume and shut down your RAID device. You can now replace the bad drive we noted earlier according to your enclosure's instructions. Now that you've removed the old drive from your enclosure and have replaced it with a new one, reconnect the enclosure and turn it on. You may get a message about attaching a new disk, just select Ignore. SoftRaid may also put up a dialog box stating a volume is missing disks. You can just click OK because that's what we're fixing now. On the left side of the SoftRaid window, you'll see the new drive listed. Just like when you created the RAID, you'll want to certify this new drive to help contribute to the safety and integrity of the data stored on your RAID. To certify the drive, select it on the left column, then go to the Disk menu and select Certify. A dialog box will appear with a short description of the certification process and options to change some parameters. However, we recommend using the default settings. Go ahead and click Certify to begin the process. You'll get a dialog box asking if you're sure you want to certify that drive. Click Certify and the process will begin. As you can see, certification takes a while. While we usually suggest you let the certification run its course uninterrupted, if for some reason you need to temporarily stop the certification to work on something else, you can. Simply select each drive you want to stop certifying, right click, and select Cancel. To start again, just perform the same steps as you did before, except this time you'll be given a dialog asking if you want to resume the previously interrupted certification or start over. Once certification has completed, you'll get a dialog box with the results of the certification, including any errors the drive may have returned. Now, we just need to initialize the drive with SoftRaid. Select the new drive, then go up to the disk menu and select Initialize. You'll get a dialog box asking you to confirm initialization, and again be asked for your username and password. Enter those and click OK. After a couple of moments, the drive will be initialized for SoftRaid and we're ready to add it back into the RAID volume. In the Volumes list on the right, select the RAID array we want to repair. Then, go to the Volume menu and select Add Disk. You'll get a pop-up window with all disks that are available to add to the array. In most cases, it'll only be the one you just added. When the disk is selected, it will blink the light on the enclosure to confirm the drive being added. Click Add and Confirm. Once the drive has been added, you'll get a notice that the RAID is out of sync and that an automatic rebuild has begun. You can dismiss this window. At this point, all that's left is to let the volume rebuild itself, which SoftRaid can do in the background. If necessary, you can still use the RAID volume, though performance may be slightly reduced during the rebuild process. If you need to, you can shut down your computer and the rebuild will resume once you restart. If the RAID volume is taking an exceedingly long time to rebuild, you can try setting your RAID's optimization to one that has a higher rebuild priority. To do this, select your RAID in the Volumes column on the right, then go to the Volume menu, all the way down to Optimize 4, and select either Workstation or Server, with the latter of the two having higher system priority and therefore being the fastest. Then, it's just a matter of waiting. Once rebuilding has completed, you can go back to using your soft rate volume as usual.